the Rosh pick. FNG has the sleep. You've got the global silence. You can global silence sleep one of the two and then just walk into the Rosh pit and look for a fight. So Secret, I think they're going to try to go for a smoke gank beforehand and then establish tempo again. Ward being placed, but there was already a counter there. And this also makes Secret realize that there is going to be a smoke. FNG, okay, this is going to be an offensive sleep for them to try oh, and get a lot here. out this of this. This is really dangerous. They pop the Global Silence. RP on two, but S4 has already managed to get they the They just don't center. have the damage. They're going to try and burst down DK Fomos. Kuro is going to be the target. Snowball going to run into two here. Illidan, meanwhile, just trying to get the rest of his team out of this one with his ultimate. But Secret are still going to be able to search for it. They're here going comes for the right now. Oh, Puppy comes in with the Echo Slam on top of the vacuum. Beautiful combination, take it out too. The slow is there on FNG as well as God. Puppy looking for the Fisher, catches at least G. That's gonna be a third kill coming out as Curl. Kills him with the ice shards, now FNG runs into one They're trap. Run a it. secondary one, trying to TP up, but the snowball is gonna be there in time. A fourth kill for Team Secret. BP, it seemed like a very odd moment to go for a bit of aggression there. The offensive sleep. Did not work out at all. BP just, as you said, do not have the damage. That's the thing is, you're 200 gold away from your Blink Dagger and your Magnus, and then you don't have to expend the sleep. You can just look for the RP and hope that you catch at least two there, and then you realize that that fight's going terribly, and you're like, this is terrible, and we should not have done this. Regrets, and then you just sleep and get out, but without that sleep there, you're hard committed to the fight at that point. Right. You win that fight, or you lose five. That's actually how that fight goes at that point. And I mean, we saw it right there. That's the weakness of having supports like this and having the lead with that, because Zai just popped the mech, full HP. And now, as you said, they're going to be able to take Roshan. Lil is showing himself. Slow him down with Fisher. Lock him in with the ice shards, too. Lil can't go anywhere. He may have to just TP out for fear of Snowball. Sure enough, here it comes. They go on to Lil. DK Fobos managed to grab two with the skewer, but there's still just not enough damage. They're trying to pop Kuro right now, but Illidan pops the ultimate. Will be able to get the right clicks in. Arteezy is stunned up. Turned into that storm oh, block, but Illidan is completely blocked out now. The Ghoul Scepter into the Light Strike Array will be able to control the Laguna Blade to pop him. Arteezy will lose his Aegis now, but it's still going to be a good fight for Team Secret. Backing you up to God, trying to get whatever damage he can before he dies. FNG will be able to successfully TP out, and DK Phobos just stays out of that fight almost entirely after his skewer. VP once again going into a fight that just cannot be won. They just walked in again. They got caught by that Roshi pit, which is unfortunate, but they lose three for the price of one. Not worth it at all. Another huge gold swing. And that's 12k already at 21 minutes, and Secret's lineup was built to do this. They were meant to just continuously run at the lineup of VP until VP breaks, but... You still have to look at VP's lineup and say that there are ways G, back nice in. steal, beautiful. Lil catching him with the telekinesis and turning the Fisher back around Puppy, but he's actually still staying alive. He gets the creep aggro off from Lil, gets the last right click. Now an RP into RTZ. They need to control him underneath the tower, but he instantly blinks away. Thank you, Blink Dagger. Now actually a beautiful Mel dodges the ensnare as well. RTZ's gonna get out of here. Zai, he's gonna be in a bit of trouble. He's already used his surge on our tour, but it's gonna be fine. VP slowed down by the trap, will not be able to catch up. That was just pure out team play right there. Zai comes in, he's barely any mana at all. Saves Arteezy, who dodges the net with that half second meld, continues to run. And they just don't have damage right now. DK Phobos commits the skewer RP, doesn't do anything. They actually can't burst him down anymore. They have to just wait for this Medusa to get six left. I think VP just have to start to realize the facts of the matter and say, okay, we can't take a fight at this point, just play incredibly defensive. And they can play like that, but they just choose to take fights at their tier two and they're gonna lose heroes for it. And I think VP just play defensive, wait it out. Their lineup is incredibly strong at the ultra late game. You've got a Medusa with a Magnus on top of that. No reason to take fights tonight. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the net worth chart, you could see a very dramatic difference. Once VP chose to go for that initial sleep, uh, you know, offensive sleep fight, the, the net worth changed dramatically. Uh, team Secret were only about 5,000 net worth ahead, and then two really bad team fights, and all of a sudden they're above 12,000. I think VP are just getting a little bit too skittish, which is perfectly fine in this situation. Uh, they're not 100% certain if they can win a fight or not, but they decide to go for it, and you learn that lesson, and I think VP is going to learn off of that, especially in this game, and just say, okay, let's play a little bit more passively, let's wait for our opportunities, and they're a good enough team to still win this. It's going to be all about playing defense right now. Team Secret is already knocking on that tier three, the top lane. Arteezy with that Desolator, putting in the damage fast. The rest of VP are actually looking to take that tier one bottom, but they are going to be forced back. 
They have to stay five man constantly, so the moment Illidan goes up to the top lane, everybody else has to retreat. So right now, the Magnus, one of the best high ground defense heroes in the game, just because you can drag people back to your tier, uh, to your tier threes. And that's what you're looking for right now, but Secret, what they're probably going to do is just farm out the map, wait for the next Roshan, maybe even smoke and bait VP into thinking they're going for the Rosh and force a sleep. Even if VP get away from that at that point, you've committed to sleep and you know you can take the Roshan no matter what. There's no reason to push preemptively before that. Like, Arteezy's not that tanky, actually. He can still die quite easily. He's gone for this really ultra glass cannon build with the Deso, Blink, Dagger, and Yasha. Right. Without a BKB, it's incredibly easy to kill him still. Nice blink away there from DK Phobos. Arteezy will just take the creeps. He was trying to farm up. And it feels like VP are going to have to pick up some items that allow them to kite Team Secret around, particularly uh, Arteezy's Templar Assassin, who, as you said, does have such an offensive build. I feel like a four staff is really necessary. DK Phobos, maybe even the Silencer picks one up as well. Uh, Ghost Scepters, another item that may be necessary. Oh, they're sandwiching right here. Yeah, they're going to try and go for S4. He does have the Yule Scepter, will, will be caught by the RP. Virtus Pro are willing to throw everything they have to be able to make sure they get a pick off there. But at the same time, with Global Silence and Illidan popping his ultimate, Team Secret will not be able to get anything else but. Arteez is already there in that top lane, putting pressure on the tier 3. Lil, kind of skittish, doesn't really want to challenge him too much. VP, kind of, God was kind of trapped there in the middle lane, but now, oop, there's the sleep. FNG going to make sure that Kuro doesn't get out of this one. There's still the snowball, though. Still a lot of potential for Kuro to maybe get out of this one. The snowball's going to delay his death, pulling it back. Kuro now trying to run himself away, but the Ooks are still there. Back him up, oh. and Echo Slam! There it is from Puppy with the snowball on top, and VP quickly trying to retreat, but they've been caught. Lil and the last right click catches him. Illidan is also running out of mana while Ortiz is trying to pick up as many kills as possible. Illidan will end up going down and Team Secret just wiped four right in front of their base. Oh man, that was such a beautifully well set up play. Zai with that vacuum. Puppy reads it as they're being sucked in. They overcommit a little bit too hard for Kuro. I mean, this is just Secret at the top of their game right now. They're really feeling it. This is when a team just really feels like they can execute whatever combo that they want because the rest of the game has gone so well for them. I mean, Arteezy is just chasing everybody down at will. They're going to take this tier 3 tower down for free. They know that the sleep is down. They know that the RP is down as well. Yeah, it seems like a full lane of racks potentially with the Dusa down for another 15 seconds. At the very least, range racks is going to be trying to be picked up. Nice blink dodge there. The ensnare will grab the range racks. They're going to look for more. Got to be careful though. Lil's actually stolen Mel. Not a bad ability. Or Rubik solely because he's got such long range. And FNG, the rest of his boys, will be able to push back Team Secret and defend their melee racks. That's the important one. But still, losing Tier 3 in a range racks this early on to the game is a bad sign for Virtus Bro's chances. It's just more of a net worth swing than you'd want to see right now. Uh, it's like 20k after that, same in experience, but... I stress that VP can still do this. Like, I don't want to count them out just yet. This entire tournament has been about the comeback and how teams have been able to put it together. And VP's lineup is built for that. You've still got ways to get back into this game, but it just gets harder as the game goes on because Secret are just feeling more and more bold. And this is not a team that's going to sit back like they did in that last game against, uh, was it E-Home? Like, they're playing incredibly aggressively from start one. I feel like, though, now that they've kind of established some dominance, they can afford to sit back and farm for the next five to ten minutes and just get those, like the way that EG played their game, right? They just build up such a huge net worth lead that the, by the time they go uphill, it's the death push. And if you manage to rebuff that, great, that's amazing, but it's just so unlikely because the enemy has such a large lead. Yeah, it's a really good way to play. It's really passive, but there's nothing wrong with securing a 30k gold lead. Yeah, exactly. That means you can pretty much take two fights in a row, lose them, and still have a pretty decent sized lead. I like this pickup. Poppy almost gets caught there. Turn around with the Fisher. And I love the Enchant Totem. Just to make sure that in situations like this, Lil is not able to steal the Fisher. I also love Arteezy's build going for the Manta next. Incredibly glass cannon build, but if he uses the Manta at the right times, he can actually dodge so much. Yeah, it's really good at breaking the global silence and getting out of a lot of spells. So it's a pretty easy pickup for him to make, but uh, they're just waiting for the Roche pit right now. They've got a trap in there, and 
They're going to farm out the map as much as they possibly can and only send the supports into the jungle. So in case oh they get picked God, up. in some trouble. DK Phobos going to need to help him out with an RP. Vacuum on it too. There's a wall on top. They managed to drink, bring some of them away, but God is not going to be able to make that TP out. Kuro once again is there with the snowball. Now DK Phobos trying to stay ahead of Puppy. FNG is ready to go with the sleep if Secret moved too far forward. There it is. The sleep is out. He actually needs to help out Illidan. Looks like VP are not going to try and force anything out of this. They accept that they have to blow the sleep to make sure everyone else stays alive. But this is now a prime opportunity for Team Secret to push into the base knowing that there's two different big time ultimates down. Yeah, and that's probably even worse than not losing any heroes in this phase of the game. When you know that all their abilities are down, and here it goes! They did it again! Team Secret! Beautiful combination that ensures a pickup on two. And FNG's just sitting there going, I already blew my sleep, there's nothing I can do about this. Melee Rax goes down, and GG is the call. Vertus Pro, they didn't seem to stand a chance. Team Secret, once they got that slight lead, they held onto it so tight. And did not make any mistakes. Very well played, Team Secret. Walking away with the victory in game number one. And that's just perfect team play. They completely punished the lineup of VP, who opted to go for a few risky maneuvers, but it didn't pay off. The G silencer, that lane had to go well. Like, the laning phase had to go nearly perfectly for VP to stand a chance, but, I mean, Secret, they just played a really thorough game. And Team Secret, a lot of people have said this about them. Once they're able to get one victory on a team, they usually just find, they know exactly what you're all about and are able to find the openings to continue to pick up win after win. So it's going to be a tough job for our analysts to decide what VP need to do in game number two to make a comeback. Thank you very much. Here we go then. Game one in the history books. Team Secret notching up game one. And they'll be back in the arena very shortly for their second game in this best of three, of course. Another chance for Virtus Pro to come back into it. We are back at the panelist desk right now. We're also joined by a very special guest star. Swindle Winners, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Yeah? I'm just loving life right now. Yeah. yeah. yeah your grin great. hasn't... It's been on your face for like a day and a half now. You just haven't stopped grinning. I know. It's just... Well, there's just so many things to <laughs> smile about, right? <laughs> uh, you've had a fantastic...